Uh, good morning, Yandra. Um, I'm not sure which language to use to say hi, but um, how's everyone going? I hope you're all well. Um, I look so tired in this, but anyway, I thought I would jump on because I did did a video yesterday, which was um, it referred to Apollosi Runaway, and this is a person that I've done a little bit of research on because. My great granddad, Arthur Laleen, had been working around Ra province in Fiji during the 1920s and 30s. And there had been a lot of rumours in the colonial administration about him and Apollosi Runaway working together. So I wanted to figure out exactly what their connection was. I still struggled to find out. So I went. For part of my PhD research, I went around to Nailanga in um, just near Bar and um, went with the Deaconess Unaisi Matualu. She was helping me out, um, taking me around because I was a woman on my own, but also um, translating in villages when we went for doing interviews. So we spoke to the Matani Vanua at Nailanga and she was... Um, we ended up figuring out that Arthur Laleen had lived on one side of the road and Apollosi was on the other side. There were a lot of details about Apollosi's activities that Arthur wrote about and they're in the Methodist Mission Archives. So that's part of why I was so interested. I'm like, how do you know all this stuff? And either he was talking directly to Apollosi or hearing about it from everybody else, I think. Um, but they kind of had similar ideas. So Arthur ended up working with Rachu Nathanieli Rao and Dranu, and they were moving lots of people onto blocks that they'd got from CSR to places around Tavua. Um, so another place we went to for interviews was Yalandro and the, um, to find out about the Toko farmers and the movement that they had led to try and push for an independent Methodist church, which came to a head in 1942 when they presented, I think it was 500 pounds in the old currency and 113 tambour, presented that to the chairman of the Methodist mission and said, we want an independent Methodist church run by Itauke. But they, the, because the war was going on and also because of attitudes in the mission amongst the Europeans, they did not think that the um, Italke were ready to take over the church. So that's kind of the stuff that I was looking at in my book. But Apollosi, Apollosi had set up a company, the Viti company before that in 1913 and he had got support from some of the Europeans around um, the West. Um, so one person who's written really well on this is Robert Nicole, who was working at USP. Um, I think he's still there. Um, the last time I saw him, he was at USP and he, yeah, his book on, um, hang on, I'm just using it to make a documentary about Tholo Wars as well, Disturbing History. This is really amazing, very expensive book, but it might be at the USP library. Um, it should be at the USP library or you can track Robert down and just say, hey, I want to read your book. Can you help us get a copy? Um, yeah, so he's written a lot. He's written a whole chapter about Apollosi. And so if you're wanting to learn more about it, I definitely recommend that. And there's also the other place you can go is the reading room at the National Archives of Fiji because they've got all the books that have been published about Fiji. And there's another book, which I think was called, I think it's Profiles of Pacific Leaders or something like that. I'll try and find it and put it in the comments, but um, there's a chapter in there on Apollosi as well. And I can't remember who wrote that. It's a long time since I read that, but definitely Robert Nicole's work is really great. And then I've, yeah, I, I, things that are problematic about it. I'll never know things, you know, like one person can never be the whole, know the whole story. You know, there's so many different perspectives that we can bring to it. Um, so, yeah, it would be great. I, I'm loving that people are contributing so much in the comments on my videos. 
um, because the the videos are just so surface level <laughs> and it's frustrating me. I'm sure it's frustrating other people, but, um, you know, I'm working within what TikTok gives <laughs> and, and I'm loving that it's letting me be in touch with everybody. Um, I'm in Melbourne in Australia and we've had some really harsh lockdowns through COVID and so it's been pretty lonely. <laughs> um, yeah, and I've really missed being in a classroom. So this is helping me feel <laughs> more connected. But also just, um, you know, I don't want my work to be locked up in, an, um, in a university setting either. It's important that other people know. Yeah, I, I do have loads of history about Fiji. So Fiji is where my research has really been focused. And because um, I grew up hearing about Fiji from my granny so much. Um, it's really, it's really where my heart is. Um, but then I've been doing work on Papua New Guinea's war histories uh, since I finished my PhD. And then I've also done a lot of work on Australian history as well, trying to find out about um, legislation that was created for Indigenous peoples and stuff like that. So um, that's why if you notice a Fijian focus, that's why I've like, um, that's where I've done a lot of my work and then PNG as well. Um, yeah, and I haven't got much Australian stuff up there at the moment. <clears throat> I do, yes, I've been to Fiji a lot. Um, I went to Fiji for the first time in 2005 and um and loved it and kind of did a tour like that was when I was about 20 or yeah how 20 yeah I was 20 years old so I went as a backpacker <laughs> and did a tour around and then went out to Tabi Uni on the ferry to see where my granny had started out because her dad had worked on Tabi Uni before going to Nailanga and um and saw the Laleen School. So Laleen School's name for my grandma's uncle, <laughs> Charlie, Uncle Charlie. Um, so, yeah, went out to all those family places and then um, and then I've been back lots of times. So I did a longer trip that, to Fiji in 2010 to do my research for my PhD. Exactly. Tavi Uni is so beautiful. Um yeah, I remember staying in a tent on the beach at a place run by a man named Bill who bought us bananas in the morning. <laughs> it was the best, just the best. And one of my friends from school was there. Um, we had a great time. And the ferry, I get seasick, so that was kind of gross, but I'm glad I did it. <laughs> um, anyway, so that was that. And, um, yeah, so I did a longer trip in 2010, um, flew to Lavuka. That was another good adventure. Um, but then if any of you have studied at USP and remember Max Quanchi, I used to stay at his place on campus and then um, go to the archives every day. I'm good friends with Opeta Alafayo who used to work at the archives so would drop in on him when I went back um, and I, I've ended up working for USP on and off over the last five years or so. So that's been good and then also worked at um, Pacific Adventist University just outside of Port Moresby. Um, so a lot of it I've done online while I've had my two boys. So I've got two boys, one's three and one's two, one turned two last week. So yeah, he's growing up real fast. They both are. Uh, so yeah, I've been working um, mostly online. That's why I think I'm comfortable with going on TikTok. <laughs> um, yeah, but then yeah, so you can find me on Facebook and stuff. I was doing lives on there through lockdown last year and also on YouTube. Um, oh, someone's just messaged you've got, you got six, five-year-old and a one-year-old. Oh, you've got your hands full. <laughs> Mine is so crazy. I just, at the moment, this is really off topic, but I've got just a mattress upstairs where they can just go and flop on the floor all the time. And, and like, then they'll just do running leaps up onto it and stuff like that. It's so simple. Um, yeah, yeah, I am far from Fiji. But the cool, cool thing now, of course, is that 
I can get onto Facebook message people like I'm good friends with Nick Holter who's working at USP still. Um, Morgan Tuimalele Fano, he's been a friend of mine for a long time though he's not on campus anymore. Um, and I, um, what's my zodiac sign? What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> I'm um I'm on the cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius. <laughs> if that makes any difference, my birthday is twentieth of January. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that that is my story so far about Apollosi Nawai and and a little bit about Arthur Laleen um and um Rachi Nathanieli Rowan Dranu. So that's hopefully interesting for everybody, but. I yeah I'd be really interested I know that video that I put up that mentions Zappalosi got so many views yesterday but hardly anyone said anything until last night my time um and I'm like did I get did I get it wrong but when I was there in 2013 I think um the I was staying with the descendants of Ratu Nathanieli Rao and Dranu and we were trying to find out what happened to the Navatu company, I think it was called, that Arthur and Ratu Nathanieli had set up. And um, in the process of all that, I was talking to Max Quanchi about it and he was saying, you know, uh, Itelke couldn't get their own bank account set up until kind of middle of the 20th century. So that's, but I haven't been able to find firm records of that but it kind of makes sense because I think they're all foreign-owned banks that were operating in the colony and so people might not have been able to get accounts but that's how some of the Europeans were useful is that they were able to set up the accounts and then help people set up businesses um, like Apollosi so but then you know Apollosi had a really rough time of it in the end with the business so um, yeah Anyway, I hope that's good. Please feel free to ask me any questions. Like I said, I, I don't know everything about anything ever, <laughs> but I generally know where to look for answers and I am really loving that this is starting some really cool conversations. So, yeah, hope you all have a good day or night, depending on what time it is, wherever you are, and I'll be back on here soon.